Okay, we are now joined by the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Please remember to silence your cell phones and raise your hands if raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question and introduce yourself and your media affiliation. Please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or cell phones is prohibited throughout the rest of the tournament. We're joined now by head coach Mark Few, Ryan Nemhard, and Anton Watson. Coach, do you mind starting us out with an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions, please. Well, hey, we're disappointed in uh, you know how this game turned out, but uh, obviously. Uh, I, I mean, as a head coach, just very, very, very proud of how these guys battled and, and uh, fought through all the stuff that this season brought and, and put us in position to be playing, I don't know what this is, March 28th or something, and one of the last 12. So uh, tip our hats to uh, Purdue. They, I mean, when those guards shoot it like that, it's, it's uh, pick your poison, man. It was, you know, they shot it great from three, and – and then in the second half, you know, we, I think, shut down that area pretty good. But then, uh, you know, Edie was just a, a load. And it's a nice entity to have to just pitch it into him. If you play him one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to either get fouled or score. So uh, they played great tonight. Uh, we played great offense in the first half and then just uh, couldn't quite keep it going. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to questions for the student athletes first, please. Please raise your hand if you have a question. We'll bring you a mic. Okay, on the first row, on the left side. Uh, Israel Schumann, the Purdue exponent. Um, Anton, just with, with Zach Eady, um, such a presence down there, how were you guys able to, on occasion, get him away from the basket? I mean, it seemed like that was a, an emphasis. How are you guys, what were you guys trying to do there? On, on offense, that is, when you guys were on offense. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think we were just trying to space him out, um, whoever he was on, try to give him ball screens. and. Um, yeah, just try to make him move as much as possible on the defensive end and get him away from the hoop. And yeah, I think I think we did a good job of that first half, second half, and um, getting to them open sides and uh, getting to the float floaters. But yeah, I think we were trying to do that. On the left side and the back row. <clears throat> Matt Calkins with the Seattle Times. This is for either one of you. Um, Mark mentioned the pick your poison with Zach and the shooting and Braden Smith actually said something similar. We're either going to hit shots or we're going to give it to Zach. How do you balance that defensively when choosing to send help or trying to guard their shooters or leaving them isolated? Ryan, you want to start that one? I mean, it's just tough. You know, he, he creates so much attention down there. You kind of have to pull in when, when the guards get downhill a little bit because they're going to throw the lobs or they're going to kick out and hit three. So, yeah, it's a pick your poison type of thing. There's not really too much else to say about that. It's just, yeah, he creates a lot of attention down there. Anton, anything to add there? Uh, he got it. All right. Additional questions for the players. Right side, third row. AJ Hall, SWX. Anton, I know you've barely had time for it to set in, but just your emotions surrounding walking off the court in a Zags uniform for the last time. Yeah, I'm just super, super grateful, super thankful. Um, yeah, it's it's surreal, and um, haven't really had time to let it set in, but. Um, I enjoyed the season with my coaches, my, my teammates, um, just all the fans, um, just all the love I've, I've gotten this year. Um, it's been super special to me, and I know my family, um, they appreciate it too. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult right now, but, you know, I love everyone here on this team, and um, it, it's, it's been a special year for me. Additional questions for the players. Left side, let's we'll start in the fourth row. A uh, question for Ryan uh, Kerber from TSN. I saw at the end of the game there you went to a couple of your teammates as the clock wound down, and then you and Zach shook hands. Just wondering, can you share what you guys said, or was it just two, two Canadian guys kind of paying respect to each other? Are you talking about what me and Zach said to each other? Yeah. I just said, keep going, man. Um, go get the job done, you know, stuff like that. And we'll jump ahead to the third row. Uh, Frank Graziano, Media One Sports Ontario, Canada. Ryan, as a follow-up to this question, uh, leading up to the game in our country, the buildup was you and Zach. Can you please share your thoughts on your relationship and your thought process heading into this game during the week? I mean, as far as our relationship, I mean, we played on Team Canada together, so um, we were together for a month, about about a month. So, I mean, we're pretty cool. We, we don't really talk too much. We're not, like, best friends or anything, but we're, we're, we're fellow Canadians, so obviously we have a certain type of relationship. We played on a team together before, and as far as the team thing, it, was never me versus him, it's Gonzaga versus Purdue, so that's how we looked at it. 
Any other questions for Ryan and Anton? Oh, got one on the right side here. Hey, Ryan, Denny Cap, Associated Press. Uh, second half, um, I asked a similar question to them. That stretch, middle of the quarter, where you guys bounce back after their initial punch, they push it out from 2 to 16, kind of puts you guys behind the eight ball. How, how difficult was it at that point when you've already survived one big push from them to, uh, to, to be able to gather momentum and try to push back, which you guys were unable to? Yeah, um, it's tough, you know. Um, I feel like we had, during that stretch, I feel like we had some bunnies around the rim that we missed that just didn't go our way. And then they got in transition, made some threes, gave it to the big fella. You got some easy buckets down there. So it's definitely hard, you know. Um, they're a good team. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, thanks, guys. You can head back to the locker room. We'll continue here with head coach Mark View. We'll start on the left side in the fourth row there. Bit of another Canadian question to start, Mark. Um, yep. Obviously, you've had a lot of Canadians on your team, and today actually was kind of a special moment. Both Canadian players on opposite teams started the scoring. Could you just kind of expand on how special Canadian basketball has been a part of NCAA and kind of what that meant today? Yeah, well, I come at it from a little different perspective. They beat us in the bronze medal game and uh, <laughs> in the World Cup, so uh, not, not as fired up as I was. Uh, uh, with, with all the zags, but no, hey, the Can Canada basketball has been uh, on the rise for, you know, pretty much the whole time I've been a head coach. And I um, mean, it's getting to the point where they, I mean, they got, they got some phenomenal players in the, in the NBA right now, and they're going to be quite the formidable foe, you know, over in Paris this summer. And, uh, you know, we've been blessed to have some great, uh, uh, Canadians over the years and obviously having the Nemharts has just been incredible. I mean, it's an incredible family and just, they're just the best. They're so easy to coach and so smart, but you know, you go back to Kelly Olenek and Robert Sacre and uh, I mean, we've just had, had a, just a great run. So uh, no, definitely, definitely on the rise and, and uh, it's going to be fun competing against them this summer. Thanks coach. We'll move it over to the right side in the fourth row. Hey coach. Um, Eddie Pels with AP over here. All right. When you're dealing with a guy like uh, Edie, how much of it is just obviously the raw talent, but like how much of it is also the fact that you know that you don't see that very much right. in this game these days? No, it's it's definitely the latter. Uh, he's just an entity all to himself. I mean, uh, and but you know having drawn on the experience that we had the first time playing him over in uh, uh, Hawaii. And that's why, you know, we felt like we played that game pretty even and we just had a couple silly turnovers, missed some shots down the stretch. So that's why we tried to play him one-on-one, -on -one, but then we got in all kinds of foul trouble uh, there. That was a big basket and an one there at the end of the half. I thought that kind of impacted us a little bit. We couldn't start Benny in the second half. Uh, but yeah, he's a load, and they did a great job. They made their threes in the first half, which really got us, you know, attentive and and kind of dialed in to take those away. And then they just time and time again went to him over and over again in the second half. And it's either going to be a foul or, you know, he, he's done a great job of really getting his skill level up and delivering in there. Thanks, coach. Back to the left side in the second row over here. Akeem Gillespie, Indy Star. Coach, um, what does Purdue do defensively, especially kind of on the perimeter with someone like Lance Jones that can put so much pressure on the ball? Just what makes them so diff difficult on defense? Well, I mean, he, he does a good job. They, they, he's been a great addition for them this year. You know, I think they added some athleticism and just uh, quickness and, and ability to pick up full court. And he kind of dogs uh, your point guard and, you know, caused a couple of collisions that were, you know, um, Offensive fouls, uh, you know, on the screens. But uh, I mean, I you know, offensively, I felt pretty good, especially in that first half. We were clicking right along, and then uh, second half, I just we, we had some good looks. We just missed those. Back to the right side, standing up in the back. Uh, Dave Bowling, Spokane. Coach, you talked earlier about the sort of some of the different paths that this season has taken. It's been different than yeah. some of the others, and that you. Uh, you learned a lot about these guys, the character, et cetera. Can you talk about now that it's over, what, what that's meant to you? 
Yeah, I just told them, like, hey, listen, I mean, I think the majority of teams in college basketball probably would have folded up there in January with based on the expectations that we have in our program and, and what we were dealing with. But these guys, they doubled down and they showed their real character and, and competed and then got even closer instead of uh, pulling apart. And I think they deserve a lot of credit for that. And I think they tr showed their true character during those times, even though, you know, there's a lot of background noise circling around them. And, uh, and they stayed coachable the whole time. Totally coachable the whole time, which was just a joy. So I just uh, I thanked him for that. Right side in the third row. Mark, I know we've asked you this multiple times this season, but now that you're on the other side of it, knowing that the Spokane kid, Anton, won't be playing for you anymore, what are your emotions around that? Uh, hey, I, I'm just, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm so happy that we kind of delivered on everything we talked about you know, when we first recruited him to, to, to come to Gonzaga. He had he's had just an awesome career. I told him in the lo the team in the locker room, it feels like he's won like 300 games at Gonzaga, you know. I mean, that's what it feels like. Um, and I don't know what his winning percentage is, but, I mean, the guy's been in national championship games and Elite Eights and Sweet Sixteens and made huge shots and huge plays. And, I mean, he's, he's been unbelievable broke presses and solved zones when we didn't know what the hell we were doing. And, I mean, that's just what he is. He's just a complete player. Switches, guards guards Zach Eady at 7'4", and guards little guys at 5'9", you know, got, and just he's my problem solver. So uh, it's been great. I mean, he, he's very close. He played with both my kids, you know, uh, uh, you know, coming up through the ranks. And so, uh, you know, we'll stay very close with him. And I'm uh, – you know, hopefully we can get him started on his pro career now because he definitely deserves to keep playing and uh, find a professional deal somewhere. We'll wrap it up on the left side, Coach, in the front row. Yeah, uh, Mark, just, I mean, I, I don't know how well you know Matt being in different conferences, but you guys have both been at it a, a while. Um, last year he just fielded a lot of questions, you know, and, and he had conviction about their style um, through it all. And I, I was just wondering how, how much does that ring with you, you know, also having success just – having the conviction he has and the way Purdue runs their program? Oh, I mean, look, Matt's a class, class act, and one of the great coaches we have in college basketball, and, and he's involved. We're, we're together with USA Basketball. He, uh, you know, coaches or assistant coaches at a select team. So we get to hang out and do that, and then we're on some committees together, and he's he's been great. I mean, I wish, as I said earlier in the press conference, that, you know, the, the NCAA needs to start listening to us coaches, especially the ones like Matt Painter and some of us that are doing it the right way and been around for a long time because he's a great leader. He's got a good feel. Uh, and wish him the best, man. I think he handled all the stuff, you know, these past couple years great. They're primed and focused. They're hungry. They're, 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 coming, they're, they're, they're hunting right now. They're not being hunted. And I think that's how you, that's how you get to Final Fours and that's how you get to – national championship games. So, you know, rooting for him. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it.